I'm Judy Cantu, and I'm over in the wall booth. I'm going to be grooming Rebel today. We're going to do her face, her ears, and her feet. Um, we're going to be working with the Arco Clipper. Um, as you can tell, it's been a while since Rebel has had her face clean, about six to eight months. So we're going to start off with a 10 blade because I want to make sure that I'm not irritating her skin. Um, so we're doing the Arco Clipper with a five in one blade. I'm going to set it on the 10 blade. Let's see, that's a 40. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to flip her ear up and I'm going to clean out the hair right here in front of the ear. And then I'm going to create a line from the corner of her ear to the corner of her eye. I am going against the grain, going a little bit at a time for her. Oh, the skin looks good. All right, so I want a good distinct line there. And you want to be able to pull this hair tight. I'm going to kind of skim this off so we can see what we're doing. Pull the skin nice and tight so that way you're not getting um, the skin wrinkly and catching it into the clipper. But what you want to do is you want to pull it up this way. You don't want to pull it down this way or you'll go too high into the top knot. And you want to make sure that it's just nice and tight. All right, I'm going to work my way forward. Oops. And you can tell she's not used to the face being done anymore. I'm going to take everything off the muzzle. Oh, she has a nice, pretty face under here. Good girl, Rebel. Clean up right under the eye. Easy. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And clean up right around the ear. Then from the corner of the ear to the corner of the eye. And then clean off the muzzle. She has got a lot of hair. Easy. Good girl. Now, I was going against the grain this way, but with poodles, their hair grows in all different directions. So sometimes you have to change the direction of your clipper so that you can get the hair and you can get the skin as clean as possible. Get all this off her cheek. Good girl. Let me clean up under here. There we go. And then I'm gonna clip, just clip this off here so I can see where my line is. She's got so much hair up there. There we go. And we'll get that scissored into the top knot. And again, I'm going in a different direction here because the hair grows in a different direction. And I just wanna get it as clean as possible. Take the rest of it off the lips. Stay, baby girl. Good girl, Rebel. Oh, I'm all up in your face, huh? Easy. Good job. All right. Then I'm gonna take, clean up her neck. And what I'm gonna do is, when you do the neckline, the poodles, people always have a, uh, have a difficulty trying to figure out how far to go. So if you use your no your nose, you can see where their nose goes to, and you can kind of cr use that as your point as to how far you want to go down on the neck. She's very unique. Okay. So I'm going to start here, and then you have a choice of doing a V-neck or doing a U-neck. <laughs> um, and the term U-neck that she's using is different from what I'm using. Um, so it just it's preference on whether you want to have a V here or you want to have a U. So once you have this set, you want to create a line from the corner of the ear to the bottom of the neckline. Take it all out. I'm going with the grain here just so I can see where I'm going. It's okay, baby girl. You get it cleaned up. And then I'm going to come back and go against the grain. Easy. Stay. Good girl. And I'm just going to clean all of this up. Do you get a lot of people asking if she's a doodle? Yes. Automatically, if your poodle has a full face, people think that they're a doodle. I have a couple of clients that I have in a full face, and they're always compared to doodles. But a poodle is its very own animal for sure. Okay, 
Good girl. I'm going to take the rest of this off the chin. And then I'm going to show you how to clean up that lip line. Easy. Good. Easy. That feels funny after having all that hair for so long, doesn't it? Good girl. Now, I, when I'm holding her muzzle, I'm holding it pretty tight, but I'm actually letting her put the pressure on my hand. I'm not putting the pressure on her face. So even though it looks like I'm really holding on to her, I'm letting her guide me in which way she wants to go because I want her to be comfortable. I don't want her to get worried or stressed. Okay, so this is one of the places that I find a lot of groomers leave hair when they're cleaning the face is right here in the flue. You see how that corner just kind of bunches up together? So I'm gonna pull that tight. And I'm gonna go right in here and take all that hair off. And that's really important for getting that face really clean. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And you wanna be careful because when you get close to their face, you can see that on their lip, they have a bunch of little, little bumpy areas. You wanna make sure you don't get that in the clipper. So if you're worried that you're gonna get that caught in the clipper, go with a little bit of a longer blade <coughs> so you can get it clean without cutting the skin. There is a lot going on in here, isn't there? Let me get her to open up her mouth and clean up the bottom. There we go. One more spot there. Easy. Uh, you have some poodles. I have a poodle that I groom that's real sensitive anytime you cut his whiskers off. He just can't even stand it. So the quicker you can get it done, the better off you are. Now, poodles are supposed to have a nice top, so we're going to create a little V from the corner of the eye to the center. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that the top of that V doesn't go any higher than the top of the eye. So I'm going to set it first by going in straight. Oh, it's okay. And then come back this way. and get that V set. Oh, good girl. Do we have any treats, Mom? Yes. I'm just making sure I have everything super clean in here. She's been eating them? All right, good girl. Got a little bit of fuzz right under here. Now, she's got really cute tasseled ears which mom colored just for us this weekend. So I'm gonna show you how to do a tasseled ear. It's something that used to be really big in the 70s. Both my parents were groomers and I always saw a lot of tasseled ears um, on the dogs in the grooming shop. So I'm really glad to see this look coming back. It's super cute. Um, if you want something kind of flashy but you don't want a whole lot of ear hair to take care of because um, dogs tend to get matted on their ears faster than they do everything behind their ears and on their ears. So like, you know, with her, especially with the color, it gives it even a flashier look. All right, so when you do the tassel of the ear, you're gonna start at the top of the ear, and this comes to a V. The great thing about you coloring her is that you can see the V. A lot of groomers will make the mistake of coming flat here and then try to V here. So it's the inverted V here so that the bottom of the ear flares out. All right, so can y'all see from there? Can we sit? Good sit, okay. So we're gonna go with a 10 blade again. And I'm just gonna start at the top of the ear and I'm gonna go down the ear, easy. And so as I'm going, you can see that I'm already starting to create that V on this side. Now I'm gonna come from the other side. Good girl, easy. There's a lot of distractions in here. and clean that up. Now, typically, once you set this, you'll come on the inside and then you'll take your scissors and scissor the edge really tight. What we're gonna do is we're going to go even tighter. Let me pull you up a little. Give you, oh, wait. Wrong one, I wanna pull this one up. All right, so I'm gonna go with a 40 blade on the inside of the ear because the ear has a lot of little lips on the inside that, you know, opening up and you don't want to cut any of this. So I'm going to take my 40 blade 
and I'm going to scoop out and get all this super clean. I'm going to go from the head to the end of the ear. You never want to go this way. You always want to come away from the head with that. Then I'm going to take the same ear and I'm going to lean it up against my fingers and I'm just going to take all that hair off right there and it's going to already clean up the edge of the ear so that I have very minimal scissoring. Easy. Let's see how that already cleans it up pretty nice. And I want to use my finger as an edge to keep the ear protected and keep from cutting it. Easy. I do the same thing with my schnauzers, my Yorkies, and my Westies that get a really tight ear and get the edges of the ears cleaned up. See how that's already pretty much clean. You don't have to do a whole lot of cleanup with that um, with your scissors. I'm gonna clean a little bit more of this up. She's starting to settle down a little bit. Good girl. Oof. Are you nervous? This is her first time modeling, so she'll be better, better on the runway the next time around. <laughs> she's actually very good. Her mom's sitting in front of her, so she's actually being pretty well behaved. All right, we're gonna pick up the table a little bit. We're gonna work on her feet. Now let me do this other ear. Well, we'll do the other ear afterwards. Let's go ahead and do some feet so that we can uh, get this. This table is nice and slow and quiet. I like to bring my um, dogs up to where, when I'm grooming, I like to have my hands between my um, shoulders and my waistline. It helps to protect my back. It, it makes me not have to do a lot of reaching or a lot of bending. So um, it's better for you. I've been grooming for 27 years and I'm actually in pretty good shape. I hear a lot of groomers that have back problems and leg problems and hand problems. But if you know what you're doing and you start taking care of yourself and bending in the right way and keeping your dogs at the right level, it'll make a huge difference on how long you're gonna groom and how long your career is gonna last. Okay, so when you're doing a poodle foot, She's had, I guess, six to eight months since her feet have been clipped again. Even yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So she's had full feet for a while. You can feel that she's got an ankle. So we're going to go right above that bone so that we can set her foot. I'm going to come down first and get all of this hair cleared out so we can find her little toesies in there. And I'm actually going to go with a 15 on her feet. All right, so now I'm gonna go against the grain. Now, on a lot of the dogs that I do, I have several standard poodles that I see every week and every two weeks, and I will do their face and feet with a 30 or a 40. When we originally started, though, I started them with a 10 and then slowly moved to a tighter blade. Um, their skin will get a little bit tougher as their skin gets used to being clipped close. So you don't wanna start off with a new dog with a 40 blade because you'll definitely burn it. Um, but if you're seeing them often, you can get closer and closer. I know some groomers don't like to do too tight on a, a poodle or on a pet dog, but I've, if the client wants that look, I don't mind doing it for them. Easy. So I'm just going between all the digits and making sure that I'm getting the area around the nails really clean. And as I'm working, I'm always blowing on the area that I'm working on so the hair gets out of the way so I can see what I'm doing. Good girl, it's okay. There you go. And now that I've got the front of the foot clean, I'm gonna decide what length I'm gonna do the back of the foot. And you wonder why that would be important. A lot of people like to do this part super, super clean. However, I live in Houston and so when the concrete's really hot, if I take all of this hair out with a 40, there's nothing to protect that foot from the hot cement. Um, 
So depending on the time of the year, you know, I might do it with a 10, a 15, a 30, just depending on what's going on with our weather, where the dog lives. So I'm going to do a 15. And just scoop it out. And from the back of the foot, I can also see... Mom, you want to stand in front of her so we can get her face in that way? There you go. So from the foot, from the back of the foot, you can also kind of open up the feet and see if you've missed anything when you were clipping the front of the foot. So you can see here where I've missed this. And I can go in and clean it back out. So I'm also going to go just a little bit above this back pad. Easy. And now you can see where that ankle is that I was talking about. When you're not sure where it's at, it's okay just to take a little bit off at a time. And you don't want to take too much off because if you, get, if you go up too high, they look like they're wearing high waters. And then, let's see, clean this up for you. So what I'm going to do next is when you set the foot, you want to round this off. So we've got all this extra hair. We can't really see what's going on. So I'm going to take my clipper and I'm going to hit it with a 30 blade and I'm going to take off the edge all the way around. And this is actually going to start setting my bevel for when I'm ready to go in with the scissors. Good girl. That's all she wanted was a little bit of mom. So now we can see that clean foot. You want to come around this way? Let me see if I can get her turned this way. Nice and clean. She's got great toenails. One thing with your poodles, if you use your Dremel, your toenails will come out nice and, and uh, short. A lot of times I see standard poodles that have super long nails and people just keep cutting and cutting and cutting, but you can only go so far because of the quick. So if you start dremeling, you can take a little bit more off and a little bit more off. And it's, if it's a dog that you don't see very often, try to get the clients to bring the dog in every, um, every week just to do a little bit of dremel on the toe and get them used to them being dremeled. And you'll see that that toe gets, the toenail gets shorter and shorter. So this is Rebel. She's going to be with us the rest. Ravel, I'm so sorry. Um, she's going to be with us the rest of the day. Jay is going to do some um, body clipping and scissoring and that kind of thing. I'm going to finish cleaning up her face and the, her other ear. So um, thank you for coming to see us at Wall Clipper. We're really excited about having you here. We have lots of great new products. We have our KM cordless. So if you haven't had the opportunity to check it out, um, come check it. Today I've been using the Arco, which comes with two batteries. One charges while, the, while you've got the other one in the clipper. Um, then it has the five in one blade. We also have the Cremato and the Bravura that you can check out. Thank you.